Welcome back, everybody. Let's see, I think we're gonna steal some information from my notes that are in the class thing. Let's just go from it from there. Okay, so uh Matthew 21, we're going over chapter nine stuff. We'll see what we get done today. Chapter nine, like processes, the inferential statistics part. So I have uh, in July of 2008, Quinnipiac, Quinnipiac, that's an interesting name. PIAC University poll asked 1,783 registered voters nationwide whether they favored or opposed the death penalty. For persons convicted of murder. For persons, who the fuck says persons? For people convicted of murder. One thousand one hundred twenty-three were in favor. Let's find a 95% confidence interval. Give me a second to write that down. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to obtain or find the point estimate. Find the point estimate P hat. Computer will do this for us, but it's so easy that we're gonna do it manually. It is X over N. And those are people, the X is the people that follow along. So 1,123. N is always the sample size. And the three decimal places, I'm getting 0 0.630.
So we can say the sampling distribution is normal. with mu of p equaling p hat, which is 0 0.630, and sigma p equals square root of p times 1 minus p over n. I don't know what this is going to be, but we'll find out. So I'm doing the square root of 0.63 times 1 minus 0.63 over n was 1,783. Take the square root. I get to three decimal places to go along with what we had above, 0 0.011. Let's make it a 90% confidence interval. Let's change it up a little bit. Give me a second to write all that down. All that jibber jabber. All right, we're gonna head over to Stack Crunch. Does anyone need this screen up a little bit longer? If you do say so, otherwise I'm gonna switch over to Stack Crunch. We're gonna grab MF or these are my lecture notes. To, uh, I'll show you guys these later in the main class. They're actually a good resource. So we were for this section, we were talking about doing stats, proportion stats, one sample. We did not get the 1,783 individual responses. We were just told how many said yes. That's a summary. So we're going to use summary. We had 1,123 people out of 1,783 being in favor of the death penalty. We're going to do confidence interval, and we want to change it to do it at 90%, so I'm going to change this to 0 0.90, and we're going to click compute. And I'm going to write down the information it tells me. It's probably hard for you guys to read it, so I'll put it over here. It, uh, the 90 from StatCrunch. I'll write down the sequence I took. Summary. And it tells us sample proportion. It actually spits it out for us. I guess I didn't need to go grab the calculator after all. 0 0.6298, which is why I rounded to 0 0.630. 
Then it says STD error, like that. And it has 0 0.01143. And that's how I rounded to get 0 0.011 which means the computer is saying standard error, that's really standard deviation. I don't know why they called it error when it's clearly the deviation calculated. That's S because it's for a sample. And then it gives me a lower limit and an upper limit. It says L limit which uh, the homework frequently calls lower bound. Same thing, 0 0.611 to three decimal places and an upper limit, which is the upper bound to three decimal places is 0 And so our this is our confidence interval. That's it, right there. Bam. 0 0.611 to 0 0.649. If we wanted to write a statement of confidence about this, we could say we are 90% confident. that the proportion or true proportion of people in the nation that support the death penalty Since that was the topic, we want to reference it is between 0 0.61 and 0 0.649. That's how a lot of official shit will write it. I don't know that that's all that readable. I would actually say between 61.1% and 64.9%. I feel that's a little bit easier to read. If you don't agree, you can use the decimal. Give you guys some time to process that.
Let's see if this matches up with some of the math we know, we've talked about. So, the three most common percentages for confidence intervals are 90%, 95%, and 99%. We tend to not go lower than 90%. No one wants less than, like, less than 90% means more than 10% chance of being wrong. 90% is the mean plus or minus 1.645 sigma. 95% is the mean plus or minus 1.96 sigma. And 99% is the mean plus or minus 2.575 sigma. And this was our mean, and this was our standard deviation right here. So we would have 0 0.630 plus or minus 1.645 times that 0 0.011. Let's see what we get. So this is plus or minus 0 0.018. So if I add it, I get 0 0.648. And if I subtract it, I get 0 0.612. So, this is pretty close to that. Would you agree? That looked pretty close. Well, to the decimal right there. But there's a difference. Does anyone know why there's a difference? Any ideas? It has to do with I rounded. Everything I use here to calculate mine was rounded. And everything they did, they used unrounded numbers. So the unrounded numbers made it shift by a single enough so that we would change the rounding from the fourth decimal place back in the third decimal place. So the difference is due to rounding errors. On my part, the computer didn't round. We're using three decimal places. Only. You guys ready for more? Looks like someone's still writing. I see head going up and down, up and down. It usually means someone's looking at the screen and writing. Oh, wait a second.
You guys ready? Okay. So I'm gonna draw the bell curve because there's more that we can like get from this. So like we try to like really understand what's going on. My mean was 0 0.630 in the center. And as I go right, three deviations. As I go left, three deviations. I'm adding 0 0.01. That's my 0 0.11 each direction. So this will go 0 0.641, 0 0.652, and 0 0.663. I go the other way, I've got 0 0.619, 0 0.608, 0 0.5, and 0.597. And 90% was one point plus or minus 1.645 standard deviations. This is one deviation, this is two. We're gonna go a little bit over halfway away from the center. So that's the 90%. And we had 0 0.611 to 0 0.649. So that is 0 0.649 right there. And that's 0 0.611. The 90% means 90% means 90 out of 100 samples will have 0 0.630 within their reach, within their range. We don't know the nationwide proportion. So we can only look at other samples.
So another thing that's kind of important is this distance right here, this error range. The distance from the mean to the end, that's called our margin of error. And it goes by E. This distance right here to that end is also E. So E, we can use either one. There's several ways to get E. We can do the absolute value of the mean minus either the lower bound or upper bound right here. Or we can calculate the error rate by doing uh, upper bound minus lower bound divided by two. I don't know that that's any, that one's like friendly. That seems like more work to me. Take a look at it. We can do 0 0.630, the absolute value of 0 0.630 minus 0 0.649 or 0 0.630 minus 0 0.611. In both cases, you should get 0 0.019. That's E. And width is two times E. So 0 0.038. That's the whole distance from there to there. That's the width. Fucking bumping it with my arm. So let's look at what are some ways we can decrease the error. Well, let me pause. Is anyone still writing this part? It's fine if you are, just say something so I don't go on. All right. So looking at, looking at our bell curve, The error feels kind of wide. But then again, I'm zoomed in pretty close. 61% to 65% isn't a really big margin. But then again, it's only 2%. Plus or minus 2%, approximately. 
0 0.019 is 0 0.019 is approximately 0 0.02, which is 2%. How can we reduce this? Yeah, that was that was glorious right there. We only have control over a few things. We can't change people's minds or the responses. We can only ask more or less people. or we could change how confident we want to be. If we want to do, we could reduce the error. By going with a lower level of confidence. That just means we have a greater chance, greater chance of not actually capturing the true proportion. But it would lower the error. Now, 2% isn't a lot, so I think I'd be happy with it here. The other thing we can do is change how many people we ask. So So let's do some, some scenarios. I want to keep I want to make sure we keep the same 0.63%. I'm going to try n equals 3,000. And that forces my x to be 1,890 to keep 63%. And I'm going to try lowering it to 1,000. See if we go smaller, what does that do? That should be 630. We're going to plug these in the calculator. And let's call this uh, option... Uh, oh, you guys don't probably know Greek symbols. Let's go with smiley face and frowny face. I don't know which one is going to be the right one, but I want to label on it. I just used A and B, so I'm going to label on something different.
And so right now we are at, before I change anything, I'm gonna do a big number line. We got 0 0.630 here. We've got 0 0.611 here and 0 0.649 here. Those are the two. This is our 90% with what we have now. This is our, our base, what we started with. I want to end up with something that's less wide as a picture. So let's go to the calculator and we're going to just change some numbers. I'm going to keep that up right there. Let me shift over to the screen. I'm going to do a new proportion stat, new one sample with summary. And I said I needed 1,890 with 3,000 people to keep that same percentage. I need to make sure I do 0 0.90. And again, this is me 0 0.615 to 0.644. So this one is 0.615 to 0.644. That's for n equals 3,000. I'll, I'll go back to the paper in a second. Uh, and we'll look at the smaller one. 630 with 1,000. This gives us 0 0.605. He's blue for this group. And 0.655. So it kept the proportion at 63%. I did that deliberately so that we could just see what happens as we change n. By asking more people, 0.615 is actually a little bit closer to 0.630 than 0.61. And 0.644 is also a little bit closer. So this is the n equals 3,000 setting. And 0 0.605 is going to be a little bit further apart. And 0 0.655 is over here. So this, going from this group, is n equals 1,000. The error range is like half that distance. So that's E and that's E. It looks like by raising our sample size, we can increase, decrease the error. In fact, going from n equals 1,783 up to n equals 3,000, assuming we kept the same percentage, shaved off about a half a percent in each direction. That's kind of interesting.
All right, that's where we'll stop right here. And chillax. Is that still a word? You young whippersnappers fucking come up with new words all the time. And on Tuesday...